Developing a pricing model, it's more than establishing a price case study. The big question customers face is, when should we shift from using a pricing mechanism to a pricing model? Now, I'll answer that question in this case study and give you some suggestions on how to socialize the pricing model before you get too far down the path. And yes, a pricing model is not appropriate for all types of contracts. Hi, I'm Jeanette Knighton, a contract attorney, and I train contract professionals, usually non-lawyers, to negotiate complex commercial contracts with confidence. I'm the author of four business books all about negotiating complex contracts and the owner of the contract negotiation skills company, Night In on Negotiation. Be sure to check out the first five case studies. They can be found here. And they all contain practical application of performance-based contracting steps. Okay, let's get started. The more complex the services, the more likely the contract needs a pricing model, not just a price. And customers should shift to a pricing model when the work is more complex, variable in nature, and there is a higher likelihood of creating value by working more closely with your supplier, such as to reduce costs, improve speed to market, or introduce innovation. Performance-based contracts are a class of agreements where payment for goods and services is contingent on the supplier achieving clearly outlined performance goals or desired outcomes. Typically, performance-based contracts contain the five following critical components. One, a performance work statement or a performance-based statement of work. Two, a quality assurance surveillance plan. Three, performance-based metrics. Four, contractual incentives or disincentives and five, the right pricing model. Let's focus on the fifth element, the right pricing model, today. All of my advice is as applicable to service contracts as it is to manufacturing contracts. Pricing mechanisms such as a fixed fee establish a predetermined price. However, a fixed fee is not appropriate for all types of work. When customers or suppliers force a fixed fee pricing mechanism on work streams that require something else, suppliers can be disincentivized to cut corners to make profit or push through costly change orders due to unexpected circumstances. The last element of all good performance-based contracts should have the right pricing arrangements. A pricing model is not only more sophisticated than establishing price, but it's a flexible framework that can address different types of supplier work in the same contract. And the pricing model must be clearly communicated in the contract to be enforceable. Pricing models are different from a pricing mechanism. Pricing model includes various pricing mechanisms to determine the optimum value exchange between the customer and the supplier. The optimum value exchange. A good pricing model is dynamic to allow the parties to adjust underlying pricing assumptions such as objectives, costs, shifts in consumption, and changes in the value being exchanged between the parties. In some cases, a pricing model simply includes actual costs, volume targets, and incentives. Now, if you'd like to know more about incentives, watch the case study on incentives here. The pricing model though must match the supplier's underpinning cost structure in order to be accurate and reflective of the value of the deal. To achieve a model that matches the supplier's actual cost structure, you've got to identify different types of costs the supplier is going to incur. Separating the costs gives predictable rates to the buyer helps with demand management and reimburses the supplier based on their actual underpinning cost structure, plus of course some profit for their profit margins. For example, and user services such as support for laptops, tablets, and the like are often paid monthly using a service fee, which includes all break and fix help desk activities to keep them up and running 
with an additional add move change or disconnect fee for new devices. Now the monthly fee reflects the supplier's cost of supporting the infrastructure. An event fee covers the incremental cost of provisioning and deploying new devices and new versions of software. And these cost types are different. It's different from support than it is from provisioning and deploying and they should not be bundled into one pricing mechanism, or you could see the disadvantage, the economic disadvantage of that particular pricing model show and impact negatively the work being performed. Now there are four steps to developing a pricing model. Step one, conduct a total cost of ownership analysis. A TCO or something similar is essential to determining all direct and indirect costs so that clear pricing decisions can occur. For example, the parties need clarity to make decisions on work scope and pricing based on intangibles such as market risks, corporate risks, social responsibility, responsiveness, innovation, or just flexibility to the economic circumstances. By combining the TCO analysis and decisions on the work plus intangibles, the parties now have a clear picture of all types of costs for the work. Step two, now you choose the right pricing mechanisms. And choosing the pricing mechanisms, plural, requires an intimate understanding of the operational risk involved in the supplier performing the work. A fixed fee that covers all types of services and event fees in the help desk example I just talked about a minute ago does not address operational risks associated with each type of service. So you want to make sure that the pricing mechanism addresses the operational risk. Step three, understand contract duration. A longer term contract duration is essential in developing a pricing model. Achieving step level improvements and process efficiencies takes time and often a significant investment on the part of the supplier. And suppliers often lose money in the first six to 18 months of a typical outsourcing type of an agreement. Suppliers often make investments that transform the environment and don't recoup their losses until the very end of the deal. This means that where there are significant investments for innovation, contract lengths must be at least three, if not five years. And then step four, incentives. The party should also incorporate incentives that are mutually beneficial in order to offset the flaws of using the certain pricing mechanisms chosen. It's essential to design the right mix of incentives by aligning the party's interests together and then rewarding proper supplier behaviors and performance. I discuss how to establish incentives in the fifth webinar in my manager training series. And you might want to know more about that by following the link here. All right, let's socialize the pricing model. Before you get too far along in developing a pricing model, the parties have to socialize the model. In other words, before the parties, this is the customer and the supplier, start to build the labor rate breakdown and total price build up, both companies' leadership have to approve the model itself. This is critical. As the parties start to follow the steps I just laid out, the parties also have to plan the cadence of socialization there are a couple of reasons. First, not everyone's familiar with the pricing model. Some leaders might get anxious because they think that they're going to get a price and they're not getting a price, they're getting a model. Those leaders need time to understand the process to develop a price and that the price is going to be using different mechanisms and incentives plus potentially liquidated damages to be an economic engine. Second, the pricing model has to match the supplier's actual underpinning cost structure. And this is a much more transparent and collaborative process to establish the price for the work. So we do need incremental socialization as not all suppliers and customers want to be on this level of trust and transparency. The third and the final is, and this is on a totally practical level, 
You just can't get too far down the path in developing a pricing model just to learn that your leadership or the other guy's leadership is totally opposed to the model itself. You know, they want to revert to a fixed fee for everything and be done with it. Or they don't like some elements of the model. Or they don't like the incentives or the profit percentage. Or they want LDs instead of something else, like profit at risk. So to socialize the pricing model, we're just, my client and I, we're just using a simple PowerPoint presentation and developing a one-page spreadsheet. Some people prefer the presentation, some people prefer the spreadsheet. We're not getting too deep in. <clears throat> and we're just setting up meetings to walk through the model itself and to tell people often as we can that this is a model only and that the next step is the actual price discussion. Please plan plenty of time to check your work and adjust the model before building up the total price. You don't want to build up a total price just to be shot down and sent back to redo that work because that work is extremely time consuming and it really requires subject matter expertise. And depending on the bandwidth in your organization, finance may or may not be able to provide that level of support more than once. So as you can see, Developing a pricing model takes time, but it is worth the effort because a good pricing model will be more economically efficient and have fewer flaws that impact the performance of the work. All right, are you intrigued to learn more? Well, if you want the manual to learn at your own pace, purchase your copy of the Contract Professionals Playbook, The Definitive Guide to Maximizing Value Through Mastery of Performance and Outcome-Based Contracting now.